everyone, my name is Dmitry Vashenko, I am a software engineer at Myron Games. In this talk we will look at the latest features of Python 3.12. Today we are diving into four key areas, typing, syntax, performance and debugging. Let's dive into these enhancements one by one. So Python 3.12 brings exciting typing improvements. First we have generics with a new cleaner assist syntax. It makes writing generic classes and functions simpler. Next, typed text allows for precise type annotations of dictionary keys and values. The override decorator ensures methods override those in superclass accurately. Advanced type parameters cater to more complex typing scenarios. Type aliases are now easier to declare and use. They make code more readable and maintainable. And lastly, we will talk about lazy evaluation and scope rules. New syntax changes how we declare generics. It's now more straightforward. Before we used type var for type parameters, and classes needed generic T to use generics. You write the type in square brackets, look at the max function and list class examples. The new way is clearer and simpler. No more extra steps or wrapping needed. This makes our code cleaner and easier to understand. Pep 692 has transformed how we use quarks. It brings typed dict into function signatures. This means we can be precise with keyword arguments. Before we had to use broad types. This didn't tell us much about the expected keywords. Now with typed dict everything changes, we define exact keys and their types. This makes our function clearer and safer. No more guessing what quarks should contain. It's a big leap for Python's type system and it's great for functions that depend on keyword arguments. This clearly reduces error and improves readability. Pep 698 introduces uh, typing override. It's a new decorator for static typing. It marks methods that should override superclass methods. This helps catch discrepancies earlier. Before method mismatches could slip through, typers and method names went unnoticed. Typing override acts as a safeguard. It ensures our overrides are intentional and correct. This boots code reliability and main availability. Web 695 marks a big step towards the Python's type system. It now supports type var tuple and param specs directly in type aliases. This means we can define more complex types with this. For example, we can create a type for functions returning integers or a tuple type that starts with a string followed by any number of elements. We can also restrict sequence elements to be hashable and even define sequences that only contains integers or strings. This update simplifies the creation of generic types. It makes our code more expressive and easier to understand. With these tools, we can write more robust and type safe Python code. PEP 695 brings a new feature, type aliases. Now we can declare type aliases more easily, even with generic, using the type statement. It makes our code hints cleaner and enhances their expressiveness. Before this update, defining aliases was more complex. We used type var or dialect assigning types. This new syntax simplifies the process, making our code more readable. Python 3.12 introduces lazy evaluation for types. Types are evaluated only when needed. It's a big change, especially for complex types. Let's look at an example. We define a type alias that should cause an error, but the error only comes when we access a specific attribute. This allows for more complex type definitions, including mutually recursive type aliases. Uh, before such constructs were cumbersome, now they are straightforward and elegant. Let's dive into syntax improvements. Python 3.12 has made f strings even better. Now we can reuse quotes inside f strings without hassle. Nesting f strings is straightforward with no limits. 
You can spread f strings with multiple lines, even add comments. Backslashes and Unicode work smoothly in f strings. Error messages got an upgrade, they are cleaner now. And there's inner tools batched, it's a handy new addition. Uh, these changes make coding in Python simpler and more powerful. So let's look at these syntax improvements. Python 3.12 simplifies f strings. Now you can reuse quotes inside them. This change makes string formatting more intuitive. Here is an example with a reading list. Notice how the quotes are consistent throughout. Before we would have caused a syntax error. Now the same quotes flow inside and out seamlessly. This update streamlines string composition in Python. Now you can nest f strings with each other as deep as needed. This makes uh, complex string constructions easier. Here is an example to illustrate. We nest several f strings together. This was not as straightforward before. Python 2.12 introduced multi line f strings. You can now include comments right inside them. This makes complex strings clearer and easier to maintain. Here is how you can format a movie list with comments. Each movie is annotated with its unique attribute. With this feature enhances code reliability significantly, especially when dealing with intricate string constructions. The new update expands f strings to include backslashes and Unicode. Now special characters and Unicode symbols fit right into f strings. Here is how you can separate items with new lines in an f string or join them using Unicode character like a black heart. With Python 3.12, f strings get better at showing where errors are. Debugging f strings is now quicker thanks to clearer error messages. Here is an example of an error in an f string. The message points exactly to where the mistake is. It even suggests you might have forgotten a comma. This precise feedback makes fixing errors faster. The new release introduces a handy tool, iter tool batched. This function breaks down data into fixed size pieces. It's perfect for working with big data or streaming in parts. Here's how it works in a new version. Just a few lines of code and you are batching data easily. Before this, you had to write your own function for batching. Python 3.12 brings exciting performance boosts. First up, async IO is faster. That's great for async programming. Um, inspect and typing models are quicker now. We have immortal objects too. They streamline memory management. There's a new guild strategy. It's unique pair interpreter. Comprehension in lining speeds up your list and dict creations and more and more enhancements under the hood. Python 3.12 boosts async your speed significantly. Benchmarks show up to 75 increase in speed. Socket writing is now more efficient. Creating async your tasks is faster than before. Current task is now implemented in C. This change along speeds things up by four to six times. These improvements make async your slicker and faster and for IO bound tasks this means better responsiveness. The inspect and typing modules are now faster. Inspect get other static sees a speed increase by up to six times. His instance checks against protocols are much quicker. Some checks are now 20 times faster than before. However, protocols with over 14 members might be slower. Uh, this trade-off targets uh, efficiency for most common use cases. These enhancements aid in better code analysis and typing. Overall, Python's introspection and typing are more efficient. PEP684 brings a game-changing update to Python. Each Python interpreter now gets its own global interpreter lock. This allows true parallelism across multiple CPU cores. Currently, it's accessible through the C API. A Python API is expected in version 3.13.
this feature opens a new door for high-performance Python applications. It's a significant step towards optimizing Python concurrency model. PEP 709 marks a pivotal shift in Python comprehensions. It introduces inlining for lists, dictionaries, and sets. This eliminates the need for creating temporary function objects. Comprehensions are now up to twice as fast. They also keep variables isolated, enhancing code safety. Uh, tracebacks and profiling see some changes due to this. The sim table module adapts along with locals behavior in comprehensions. A notable quirk involves iterating over locals during tracing. There is a straightforward workaround for that. PEP683 talks about a new idea called immortal objects. These are special because they don't need tracking how many times they are used. This is good for big apps like Django ones with a lot of users to run smoother. In Python, using an object normally means it uh, gets counted when, which can slow things down. But with immortal objects, this counting doesn't happen, keeping things fast. Still, this cool feature is only useful for a few Python projects. PEP688 makes a buffer protocol accessible from Python. Now classes with a buffer method works as buffers. It introduces two new magic methods, buffer and release buffer. There is a new standard way to talk about buffer objects in Python. A new set of options for making buffers just right. Two new special methods make buffers easier to use in Python. This is great for sharing data, especially with C extensions, but most Python users might not found this very useful. Python 3.12 brings a mix of performance boosts. The Vault Optimizer is now in experimental phase. It promises a noticeable increase in speed. Regex substitutions are quicker by two or three times. Comprehensions for common collections are more efficient and calls to the super method are now faster. Debugging in Python 3.12 got a big upgrade. Name error suggestions are sharper now, they got you better. Syntax and import errors messages are clearer, they are more helpful now. The new API for monitoring C Python execution events. These changes make debugging less of headache and more of breeze. Python 3.12 makes error messages more helpful. Name errors now offer suggestions for fixes. It can hint at missing standard library imports. It also suggests correct uh, instances attributes. For example, it might recommend using self attribute. Uh, these changes make debugging much easier. And uh, new release improves syntax error messages. Rows like import x from y now have clearer guidance. Import error now suggests correct names from the module. These changes simplify debugging. They help quickly identify and fix import errors, especially useful with unfamiliar libraries. PEP669 uh, transforms how we monitor Python execution. It introduces a new low-impact monitoring API. This is perfect for profilers, debuggers, and monitoring tools. The API covers a broad range of events with little overhead. Debugging and coverage can now be nearly overhead-free. Here is how to use the new capabilities in Python 3.12. Previously, tra tracing calls had a higher performance cost. With PEP669, uh, monitoring is more efficient and less intrusive. So we've covered the updates in Python 3.12. All improvements touch on typing, syntax, debugging, and performance. These changes significantly simplify development. They make code more reliable and understandable. So thank you for your attention and see you next time.